On this episode of Direct Connect, I learn how officers from ADOT's Enforcement Compliance Division protect our infrastructure and make sure that all commercial vehicles are following the rules. Here we are on I-40 at the Topak Port of Entry. I see a whole line of trucks starting to come in onto the port. Hi, registration please. Here in the scale room, I get a glimpse of how ADOT monitors the commercial vehicles coming into the state. ECD confirms that drivers have current registration, insurance, and commercial licenses. It also makes sure trucks don't exceed size and weight restrictions. Not every truck traveling I-40 has to stop. That's because Arizona uses pre-pass technology. As trucks approach the port, the system can determine whether or not a vehicle is compliant, notifying drivers to either bypass or pull into the inspection station. Do you ever have somebody who says, you know what, I'm just gonna try and sneak by? Yes, sir, yeah, we do daily. They're called port runners. And when Officer Matt Eve sees one, he goes after them. So we're in one of our pursuit units now. What's happened, Matt? Uh, we just had a violator go by the port of entry, and uh, we're going to try to see if we can catch up to him here and make a traffic stop on him. So he's blown by the port, and he was supposed to stop. Yes, sir. How fast are we going, Matt? Uh, we're about 102 right now. Have you had to train in high-speed pursuit? Yes, sir, yeah. Did a lot of training in the police academy. That makes me feel better, Matt. <laughs> so he's a smaller truck. Yes. He may not have thought he was supposed to stop. Exactly. On the way out on 13, your 29th, negative to 2003 Isuzu, expiration 1217 at 1107. So Matt's up there talking to the driver, and it looks like he's got sod and maybe some other material on the back. He's opening the door up. Thank you. You're welcome. Moss Street, Arizona Department of Transportation. Yeah. The reason I stopped is you didn't stop the port of entry back there. How come? I just completely spaced it. I'm not used to driving this. I'm a okay. district manager. Okay. And I'm trying to save money by driving the truck myself. I'm yeah. Not a driver. Okay. All right. Do you have your driver's license, yeah. registration for the truck. No uh, guns, knives, anything in the vehicle yeah. I need to know about, right? All right. Pull off here so that you're way off the road yeah, for yeah, me, okay? Yeah. I'm going to go back and I'll be with you in a couple. Okay. Matt had said that his load is not secured and Arizona law does require you to secure your load to keep it from flying out or shifting in the truck and causing a hazard. And as you can see what he's doing right now, he's got the tie down straps, but he hadn't been using them. If that were to shift and come out the back of the truck, that would be pretty bad for anybody following him. So once the driver's load is secure and he's provided the required documents, Matt writes him a warning and sends him on his way. Matt, help me out here. What, what happened during the stop? So what happened was the uh, driver bypassed the port of entry and we right. stopped him and uh, after contacting the driver, he informed me that usually he doesn't drive trucks. He's kind of filling in for one of his employees and I see. Okay. he didn't understand that he actually did have to pull into the port of okay. entry. And okay. He is required to that he is driving a commercial vehicle. Did he have the proper driver's license? He had the proper driver's license. He ended up producing the proper insurance, oh, okay. which was an issue at first, but he was able to pull it up on his phone. And so, then, so that's evidence of insurance if it's on Yes, sir. In Arizona, you can show insurance on your okay. cellular device, on an Great. electronic device. Great. Okay. So really, um, what we did here today was instead of citing the person, it was more of an educational stop? It was more stop. of an educational stop, yes, yeah. sir. Okay, great. Good to know. Thank you. Now we're inside the Topak port of entry, and I'm here with Sergeant Pat Brock. And Pat, you've got something in your hands that says point blank with a target on it. What What is this? Yeah, this is, uh, we're gonna have you in this in a little bit. This is our uh, ballistic vest we use for our protection. So I see you got my name on we here and do, everything. We do, and okay. we, we didn't know how it was gonna work out with you, so it's not it really right. sewn on there. <laughs> So, oh, so, we did. so I might not pass probie yeah, here, you okay. Know, it's quick, you know, if it doesn't work, we're just... I'll be drummed out of the core immediately. Okay, I got it. Very good. So 
you put these on every day? Put them on every day. When it's hot outside, these things are hot. When it's cold, they're cold. So they're not, they're not, not really, really comfortable, good. but they're definitely a necessity. Okay, great. So well, let's, let's try start. it on. Wow, this is kind of heavy, Pat. <laughs> you know what? I, How much this, do these weigh? This one, for some reason, might weigh just a little extra. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking someone might have added maybe some ankle weights or something to oh. it, but I'm not sure. We just wanted you to have the full effect. <laughs> well, believe me, this is the full effect. Oh, see, I popped one already. So oh. I think that... Uh, we'll pop her back for you. Okay, there we go. There we go. That's a nice fit. There you go. I sort of feel like I'm, uh, you know, in a girdle. We have the knee pads for when you're down there and under the trucks. Okay. And then it's rare, but we have had to use these up here in Kingman on uh, we were called out to the prison riots. Oh my, yeah. So we, we have our ballistic helmets. I'm gonna see what this feels like to wear one of these. This is my Michael Dukakis moment. Well, that seems kind of comfortable. <laughs> okay, well, this is quite the outfit here. It is. So do you wear this all day when you're on shift? You do. I see that as we did the traffic stop. You never know exactly who's pulling up exactly. and what you're walking into. So when you get home at night, I mean, is this the first thing you take off? It is. And you know what? They say this is your spouse's favorite sound at night as a law enforcement officer is the sound of the Velcro tearing <laughs> off because that means their yeah. significant other has made it home and, and they're, safe. they're safe. All right. Very good. Thank you. Yes, sir. I head into the scale room once again to meet up with Officer April Perez. Driver, come up here. She is screening vehicles for a possible inspection. Hi. I need your driver's license, your registration, proof of insurance, your IFTA. I'm going to do a level one inspection on your truck. I'm going to have you park in the very first lane. You see where the cone is? So we're grabbing chocks here to put under the drive wheels of the truck to make sure that it doesn't roll back on us. And we've also got our handy creepers that we're going to be going underneath the truck with to take a look at the equipment. And this is where we start our inspection and go to the front of the truck okay. and look to make sure all the lights are visible All right. and that they're operating. And already we can see that he's got a headlight out. On oh, the driver's I see. side. Yeah, right there. Right. Okay. And then I'm checking across the top of the truck that they have to have the clearance lights on as well. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to tell them high beams. You got it. You got it. And then I'm going to come to the left side here and I'm going to make sure that the lights are flashing. There has to be one on the side of the truck, one on the trailer. And then when we get to the back, we'll be checking forward. Okay. So now I'm going to go back up to the driver and ask him to turn his windshield wipers on with fluid and also make sure the horn works. Okay. Okay. Pretty noisy and hot out here already. Good, okay. So we didn't see any windshield washer fluid and April's gonna make sure that he's got fluid when she opens the hood. This is the wiring system from the truck to the trailer that sends the signals for the lights, the rear brakes. A lot of times these come loose and you'll notice that a trailer does not have any brake lights. I see. Because okay. the pigtail came loose. Okay. So we're going to pat these down yep. and check the lug nuts, make sure they're tight. We work our way around the truck, making sure there are no loose bolts or cracks on the trailer, checking that straps on the loader secure and that all lights are working properly. Everything works good. And then to the right. So far, things look pretty good with this inspection. The truck has a few minor issues, but we still need to get under the hood and beneath the truck itself. So we're gonna go under the truck. <laughs> Gotta get in our creepers. And it's hot down here. There's the end of the muffler is here, so do be careful not to touch the square box with the holes. All right, so I have to ch chalk this, and I'm gonna give you one for your side. Okay. You're gonna get it on the inside there. 
If you, right can, you can you see the push rod? Yeah. This you want it closest it. to the to the chamber. Okay. All right. Okay. Now you're gonna watch the brake pads, and I'm gonna yell out to the driver, brake, and you're gonna see want to see them to expand okay. and make sure that they're working. Okay, driver, brake. Did yours move? move? Yeah, it did move. Okay, so now wow. I'm underneath the chamber and I'm taking a measurement here. Okay. It looks like it's one and seven eighths on my side. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give you yours and you tell me what yours says. And do you hear that noise? Yep, I do. Do you know what that is? No. It's called an air leak. Uh oh. Uh, push your tape measure to the end. Okay, so he's probably right at two inches. Okay. All right, release! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's oh. loud. All right. Hey. Now, we're gonna go around okay. and then come up the, the back end on the other, on axle number three. Okay, got it. Got so it? Give me that. I did and that. Chuck and and I'll meet you down there. Okay, here we go. Woo! <laughs> uh. Oh, <laughs> it's hard to maneuver these things around. You must get a knack for it or something. Welcome to my world. Welcome to your world. Wow. Yeah. All right, I'm going to give you this chalk. Okay. And then I'm going to let you go up there and chalk them. You're, you're almost a pro now. Yeah, right. All right, so once again, I'm going to go ahead and Watch the brake pads, make sure they expand. All right, driver, brake! Wow, that is a big no-no. He's come out probably three and a half inches. Maximum allowed would be a two inch on this. So what does that mean if he's um, out three and a half? After so many, if there's more than two yeah. on the vehicle, then he could be placed out of service. Okay. Okay, release! <laughs> okay. So that was a nice blast of grit you get too in the face. <laughs> you do, that's why I really told you you needed your glasses. Yeah, I get it. Okay, let's come out because we don't want to be under the vehicle when they're rebuilding air. Okay. It's another safety thing. Okay, go ahead and rebuild. <sighs> so that is a very different world under there especially when the brakes go off <laughs> and it's pretty noisy and it's very hot. So I'll bet your abs build up quite a bit getting in and out of these things, right? Yes, you gotta have strength. <laughs> I feel like a turtle on its back right now. I'm not sure I can get up. You might be developing a <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So that's kind of a shot of adrenaline being under there while all that stuff is going off. I'm sure you're used to it, but yeah. first time under there, it's uh, a little bit daunting of an experience. All right, that's our indication that he's full. Okay. We'll go ahead back underneath, and we're going to check the underneath frame of this trailer. This All good. right, let's move on out. Okay. I feel like I'm being reborn here. <laughs> Ugh. I emerged. Oh. <laughs> and I'm up. <laughs> Woo. Right. Is there any graceful way to get out of these? <laughs> oh, one step at a All time. All right, I'll do the turtle. <laughs> oh. Wow, that was quite an experience. So that concludes the inspection, but now you have to go ahead and, and put everything down on in, in, in the computer. Into the computer, you put the motor carrier's information in, the driver's information, the vehicle, the trailer's information, and then the violations that you found, Okay. and then you print the report. So we found that leak, and we tracked it down on the passenger side, and we told him it's an out of service, you got to fix it before you can go on. Um, why is it important that he fix that? What could happen if he doesn't? Well, if the bolt came undone, then the air is going to flood out and he won't have any way to stop the vehicle. Oh, okay. So that's really important that yeah, he's able brakes. to stop the that's vehicle. Your brakes. Okay. Yeah. And then I think one of the um, brake rods was coming out too far. What does he have to do about that at this point? It's going to be 
what I call it is the honeydew list. Uh, I'll okay. usually tell the drivers that down the road you need yeah. to get this fixed before you uh, pick up your next load. Okay, but it's not an out of service. It's not an out of service. And that, that takes some of the stress off their shoulders when I tell them, you gotta get this done. Okay, if I was a driver, I might be a little bit miffed that I have to stop and lose time, but this was a random inspection we did and so it was a good thing to do, right? We found something important. Good, it, yeah, so it keeps him safe and it keeps everybody else yeah. safe on the road. I especially have to thank this team here today and this crew. This has been a new learning experience for me, being in that Tahoe chasing down that vehicle and being under that truck. My hat is off to people that during the summertime, when it's 115 and 120 out here, are crawling under all different makes and types of vehicles to make sure that they're safe, make sure those drivers are safe, to make sure that we all stay safe. So I just want to thank Officer April Perez for helping us keep Arizonans and our roadways a little bit safer today. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I enjoyed this. I did too, I guess. <laughs> oh, I see. So you put a little extra weight they, in there. They huh, may have added. It. Hey, that was very clever. So this was the camera crew's idea? Yeah. Look at this. I don't know anything about that. Gold's gym. Well, no wonder it felt so heavy. <laughs> <laughs>